Now, many conservatives are uncomfortable talking about these things. Some think that being conservative just means being pro-tax cuts and pro-business, but that's not enough. Unless you are also prepared to be pro-family, then are you truly conservative? A lot of families might break down, not through divorce, not through any reason. If you're a kid whose parents died, you don't want to be part of that statistic. You don't want to hear politicians spell out your life chances are worse off because you live maybe with your grandmother and your mum because you don't have a dad. I'm wondering how helpful it is for kids who are growing up like that to hear politicians in, in, such, a, in, in such a place of authority saying, you're fucked. Well, Emily, I wouldn't use that language at all. And I think I've been very clear that there are many children in different circumstances that are going to do well for all sorts of reasons. But this is the but problem. Why do you talk about this, that instead of no, the breakdown that comes from divorce? You know, that's what I'm, guess I'm, I'm talking about. I didn't say that. I said that the best possible outcome for children is to be with their parents without the child. And, and here, is, here is the issue that we have, I'm afraid, with the media um, and with the inability of politicians to be able to talk in the general. So it's our job as politicians to talk about policy making mm. and to do that you have to look at the general. You don't make policy for the individual, you make policy for the general. It's the individual, the family's job to look after themselves and to make their decisions in their best interest and that is their freedom to do it. It's the, let me finish, it's the politician's job to make, to generalise. Now it is very clear uh, parallels with the immigration debate. So when Suella Braverman stands up and says immigration is too high, everybody says but what about these immigrants mm. that have contributed, what about these people? Of course they're there are many, many individual immigrants who have contributed in incredible ways to society. That doesn't mean that we can't say, in general, immigration is too high. And it's this inability it. to distinguish between the individual and the general that is stopping politicians from speaking freely about some very important issues. I get it, and I think honesty is important. But rhetoric is also important. And something has started creeping into the language of some of your colleagues here. And I'm going to quote Mark Harper who uh, is the Transport Secretary, talking about councils deciding how often people can go to the shops, ration who uses roads and when. And I think it was Claire Cortino that was talking about Labour trying to ban meat. Don't you worry about the responsibility that comes from this conspiracy theory laden language? You don't want to see your party use it, do you? I just think that is a ridiculous premise for a question. People want truthful politicians, people like politicians who say what they think. Mark if you Harper look at the, saying the, it's sinister no, when council's no, trying to your, stop you going to the shop. To say, your premise of saying that this is conspiracy ridden language and that what we've got to be careful with rhetoric. I think people want to hear politicians say what they believe. And if you look at the polls on who supports what Suella Braverman is saying, or who supports mm. strong families, the vast majority of people believe that. So it's the Westminster Harper, bubble that thinks it's rhetoric. It's the common sense right. position that we should say what we think. If Mark Harper believes that councils are stopping people from going to the shops when they want, should he be allowed to say that, even if it's not remotely true? Well, I, I haven't read his speech or heard his speech or read that, so I'm just not going to comment well, on it. Well, just read it out to you. I mean, just well, as a if thought, I is, it, is it OK? If, if, I, if I was standing for the Conservative Party and I said, I believe 5G masks are giving us all cancer, is it okay for me to stand up and say that because well, I believe really it's believe true? believe that, I think people should know that you really believe that and then they can vote on you on the basis of whether you... So Look, it is fine. We are I mean, Emily, we are going down a rabbit hole. Of course politicians should speak the truth. But the problem is we're too often afraid to speak the truth because as I found out this week, if you say something very anodyne mm. and completely evidence-based, like children who grow up with two parents are most likely to do well, suddenly you're called all sorts of strange names and ists and a conspiracy theorist and someone who hates single parents families. Well, to be fair, that's this why we're what, debating it. I mean, I hope yes, you'll, uh, you'll you know, agree that here we're debating it, and I'm trying to ask you what constitutes a family of all shapes and sizes. That's what we've been talking about. And I've said that. Yeah, there are fine. all types of families and all types of households, Let me just but as a politician, we need to look at the general in order to make policy. Okay. The News Agents. This is a Global Player original podcast. 